Bela, the hour of nectar, according to Nanak. Nanak says, Amrit Bela such now, Vadiyai Vichar. The hour of nectar or Amrit Bela, you get the dawn of truth. There are few questions. Someone has asked, what is the difference between a Sadguru and a Sheikh? First, we try to understand the word Guru. Guru comes from two syllables. The words that have originated in Sanskrit language, most of the words have originated from there. It comes from two syllables, Gu and Ru. Gu comes from the letter G. G means light and G refers to cow, gau. It refers to earth. It refers to Govind. All these words mean one thing, light. One who has experienced the light and the syllable R refers to one who dispels that, one who begins the process of dispelling the darkness in you. For this first you have to experience the light within and then you initiate the process of dispelling the darkness in the other. Then what is the meaning of Sadguru? This is a prefix who has added to his name is not important. Is important what is his role and is it creating or dispelling the darkness out of you? So whether he calls or the seekers or the disciples call him Sadguru or Guru or by any name, it does not matter. What matters, how does his energy field, his intelligence, his understanding dispels the ignorance of the few? Sheikh is a word that originated in Sufi terminology. Guru Rev emerged from the Hindu tradition or Vaishnav tradition. Both mean the same thing, refer to the same state of awareness that removes the ignorance. And this is important. Now, what is initiation? Is the process when an individual comes in the company of a master, he is at the level of logic, he is at the level of religion, he seeks comparison, that is what he has been taught. He is trying to analyze the things at the level of the mind. Mind is the part of the body. It is limited in many ways. Many, many ways it is limited. And that which is limited cannot lead you to unlimited or can become the process of the unlimited. Through logic, you are trying to make this small, small aspect of life as whole. And this becomes the cause of misery that you encounter. When you are living by the moment, you are not living by the logic, then a process is initiated into you. And that process, sometimes it is not necessary, sometimes apparently the master does that to create a bond with you but it is not necessary. Initially, in Sufi traditions, the master never initiated a disciple until he has reached to a certain stage. And initiation is always in two ways. Number one, 
initiation means transforming the energy it can be in the form of grace that descends from the top and goes below this jesus has explained in a beautiful way initiation with water and initiation with fire water flows from higher to the lower because of the law of gravitation the grace descends from above and because the law of grace it flows downwards it happened moses used to initiate the people by standing in the river jordan and he said i initiate you with water he who comes after me is mightier than i he will initiate you with fire fire is lit and its smoke and flame goes upward so these are two ways one is the way of jasp the other is the way of sulup grace is the way of sulup things very mild pleasant is descending in you when during the meditation sulup becomes dominant at times slowly and slowly you are feeling very pleasant ecstatic you don't even feel like closing your eyes there is an inner smile that reflects on your face such are the expressions of the state of sulup in jasp a fire is lit before fire is lit below its flames are going and reaching to the various centers activates those and when just becomes dominant you feel during the meditation as if your whole body is mashed up and you feel that as if you have gone into a sleep but that is not a sleep you cannot keep your eyes open that such a state is the state of jas this is known as initiation by fire so it depends upon the inner state of the seeker that the master uses either of the two techniques to initiate the person into the fold but that is not necessary once you are into and a spiritual path means that you have taken the responsibility of your growth into your hands no one is responsible for it you are responsible for everything that is happening in and around you you are light the light is within you as consciousness as awakening and this is the very essence of light within you are living by that light but we are interested in other things not by our own light and that is the emphasis of all the masters when buddha was asked what is your message buddha said be a light unto yourself live by your own light you have been given that and when you can experience this most is at the hour of dawn when the two layers of consciousness are merging into one another consciousness is changing the gear you become aware of it in the morning there is one hour when night is disappearing dissolving into the day and that hour is known as the up dawn the night has not disappeared as yet the sun has not appeared on the horizon but it is beginning to nanak calls this as amrit vela and similarly in the evening the time is of dusk 
when the sun is disappearing out of your sight and moon is trying to become more and more visible there is an hour when it is neither day nor night it is evening or dusk that is known as sandhya kal those are the two periods most auspicious for prayers these are symbolic any time your consciousness is changing the gear that is the time one has to be more and more aware but you are never available to this moment and this is a very fragile moment you continue to live in the graveyards of the past lamenting over the misdoings of the people around if this is not so then you continue in the hope that things will certainly change sometimes in their future you swing between these two poles of time however you remain only in the horizontal or linear dimension of time linear dimension of time moves from the past to future continues to overlook the present moment however you remain only in the horizontal or linear dimension of the time but growth happens when the movement becomes vertical and in horizontal movement the pendulum moves from swings from one end to the other and sometimes it touches the present moment but you miss it you may be listening to me like a container you are here your awareness is missing you have to be very alert and awake to capture this moment this you will find difficult so you use your own understanding and wake up early in the morning 2 or 3 in the morning and start doing your prayers reading scriptures japji or any other thing is this what nanak means definitely this is not the essence of the master how to capture this precise moment nanak and other masters have given a methodology let awareness be the key and this you have to practice every single moment which is available to you when you eat only eat eat meditatively as if you have become eating when you are watching a flower become the watching be identified with the flower and when you are identified with the flower you will realize that something begins to grow in you have you observed how do we eat we have a morsel in our mouth taken from the platter that is in front of us we keep another one in the hand occupied and then you continue to focus on what is on the platter or what to get next deep within thoughts are flowing like an undercurrent you will miss the moment of eating if during these small moments when you are doing things you are awake available to that moment you are aware then you will realize that you will be able to capture what nana calls the amrit vela how you discover the precise moment that nanak is speaking of and then you will give it give your meaning to nanak's word and then consider the early hour between 2 and 3 as the amrit vela and start reciting or chanting japji sahib or doing your other prayers start taking a bath going to the temples or doing this or that how to capture this moment be aware when you are eating bathing 
going to the street or walking in your place of work, only then you will be able to capture this precise moment. Let me remind you something of Nana. When he was only 13, again and again I have spoken on this and I never get tired of speaking of these events again and again so that one day you will capture that moment. You will understand the essence. Nanak was a teenage boy. Imagine teenager, 13 years of age. He was working for a grocer. He was weighing food grains. He was not chanting Jabji Sahib or his sala or his mantra or his zikr, nothing. He was engaged in a mundane activity that was necessary for his survival. He was simply weighing and when he reached the number 13, 13 means in Hindi, Tera. And when you remove this last syllable H, the sound, it becomes Tera. He remembered something. The moment of remembrance came. Fruition happened. Nana forgot everything that he continued weighing, but counting did not go beyond 13. 13 is the last stage. All the time we consider this is mine, that is mine. We remain in that my car, my house, my shirt, my job, my father, my mother. My, 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 every time we remain in that state, we sit, seldom recognize that this is yours and everything you try to capture as mine. Nanak forgot everything, then he continued weighing, but the counting did not go beyond 13. Nanak became meditative. This is the first experience of Samadhi or Satori or a glimpse. He has discovered the moment of Amrit Bela, when the consciousness was changing the gear. From worldly it became to the otherworldly. From limited it became to unlimited. This is the methodology of the Master. And I have given you the example from the life of Nana. What can really be a better explanation than this? Once you have succeeded in capturing this moment, then you can meditate any moment. Therefore, before going to sleep, remain on the bed. Free the mind from all thoughts. You are now entering a realm through which you can reach the other shore, where you will find that for which you were lamenting for lives. Be a witness. Allow the inner sky free of any clouds. Just vast blue sky remains. Be aware that you do not fall asleep. You, are, you can really be aware when consciousness is changing the game. You remember, you will recall and doctors will know it very well. Observe that when you are giving anesthesia to a person and you ask him to count one, two, three. One he counts very clearly. Two, a little stammering and fadingness comes. Three, lingeringly, in a broken voice, elongated, uses number three and he cannot say four. Is it ordinary technique? This is the methodology. The consciousness is changing the gear from conscious to unconscious. And if you observe very seldom, a rare one will be able to count four. Three is prolonged, lingered, broken, a stammering sound, not four. So these are the three layers of consciousness and the fourth dimension is beyond. This always happens. Be a witness.
allow the inner sky free of any clouds just watch the vast sky remaining there be aware that you do not fall asleep you can really be aware when consciousness is changing the game this is very delicate and precise moment you will find just as night becomes day and day becomes night now your waking is converting into sleep and sleep is converting into wakefulness you will be able to witness it too you are witnessing yet still you are neither asleep nor waking nanak says this is the precise moment you have known the essence of amrit vela the hour of nectar you are the witness to be the witness to experience the witness consciousness is the essence of the hour of nectar not that between 2 and 3 or 3 and 4 is the hour of nectar this is the very essence in all the practices of using that hour but we use that hour literally not understanding the essence of it drown in the magnanimity of this moment this is what nanak implies when he says amrit vela such now that is the only truth vadiyai vichar you cannot think about it have you ever been in love with someone when you are in love you do not have to chant that i love you all the times such talks are shallow such talks does not help and the moment you utter such words the glory of love is lost love is unseen unknown and unknowable yet a realized truth it is searching that you cannot put into the words that energy field when you are really in love words disappear and utter silence descends deep within the glory or the magnanimity of the beloved remains like an undercurrent this is a feeling not words words reach the mind feeling or bhav expression echoes in your being and lingers like the dissolving notes of an enchanting melody lovers are always silent and their silence is a dancing and singing silence you will hardly find husband and wife silent they remain in constant dialogue and when either one is silent there seems to be something wrong lovers never talk i understand that in love there is a phrase that life the togetherness of seven lives for seven lives our relationship has been together you cannot live one life and you are talking about seven that was a long time concept now everything even love has become a commodity and it must have a date of manufacturing and the date of expiry and when you buy any commodity you look at the date of manufacturing its batch number and the date of expiry is love a commodity that requires an expiry date must expire 30th of december 2016 if you are really in love and you understand the words will disappear and instead there will be a silence love is fulfillment unto itself lovers are so much overflowing that just holding the hands or looking into each other's eyes is fulfillment unto itself in such precise moments words become a knocking an obstruction you want to invite the silence and these words come to disturb the dance or the melody of the silence this precise experience this precise moment nanak calls 
as Amrit Bela. You need not recite Japji or anything else. Just meditate or introspect over the glory. Be filled with an unending gratitude and incessantly, incessantly gratitude is overflowing through your every gesture and movement. Do nothing. Be filled with the glory of that which is. Overflow the magnanimity of that which is. You will find a new harmony between you and the whole. Day comes, night passes, awakening is happening. This is wakefulness. Dark night is now disappearing. The light is descending. Awakening is happening and this is through the words, through the gestures. The master is creating that situation. You are a flame filled with new energy field. In such moments, for the first time, you encounter life. Truth reveals itself. Nanak says that in every moment you understand. You come to understand body comes as the outcome of your actions and it is the grace that opens the door of salvation or awakening. You cannot attain to this by your own efforts. This happens when all your efforts exhaust. The door, the door of grace opens in you. Doer disappears. This is the state of non-doing. And non-doing is the way Nanak says. This does not mean laziness. You are doing everything but you have an undercurrent going that whatsoever will happen will happen by the grace of the Master, by the grace of the Vaheguru. This simply means that all your efforts exhaust only then the grace descends. You trust your efforts, so you build temples, churches, statues and such things. Can there really be a place of God created by man? He is uncreated. So is his place. He is overflowing all around. He is chirping in the birds, blossoming of the flower, roaring of the ocean, flow of this river, a smile of the child and vastness of the sky. These temples, mosques and churches are not the place to visit. These are the places, not ordinary places, but the storehouse of energy. There is a particular art and a science of creating these places. These are the centers for meditation, but instead of being the center of meditation, these have become a place of socializing, a place of prayer, chanting, and worship. Initially, the temples were built as a place for meditation. There is a particular science that is known as Agama Vidya, and there are five basic principles that are used to create that. The size of the sculpture, the gestures, the position, particular way of consecrating, these are important. And when you are in meditation, you are company of the Master, you have become a storehouse yourself. It is like the battery that needs, that is automatically recharged. And if there is some malfunctioning, the battery is not charging, the alternate is not working, then you have to carry your battery to a place where it can be recharged or checked. So temples, churches and mosques are those places where you can get your battery recharged. But it does not happen. Those have become the place of socializing. And the moment your battery is 
automatically charging its charge is maintained 13 point all the time then do you need to go to the place where your battery is to be charged people in the west think they try to interpret the masters in your own in their own way when nanak says you don't need to do anything they consider this lazy so too nanak's father kalu mehta thought that nanak was lazy because of his ways and means his father has the intelligence of a businessman so he thought nanak to be lazy he was worried he created several opportunities for him but all in vain he did nothing he returned unlearned he was sent to the teacher who was a pandit nanak entered in argument the pandit himself brought back nanak home nanak says when the last letter has come then what has remained he was to have sent to a malvi to learn persian he said to say the word alif and nanak asked what is the meaning of alif no one has asked in his whole life or experience the meaning of the word alif alif is the beginning so you have to tell what is the beginning nanak inquired from the teacher what one gains by education did you attain to god pandit replied no one can attain by reading also i have not attained nanak responded when he has to then he has to be searched by a different way what is the way then ecstatic kabir says by reading the scriptures by reading the book pothi is the word that kabir uses pothi pad pad jag mua pandit hua na koi everyone has become learned by reading the book book he calls all the scriptures is a common word used for all the scriptures by reading that we become philosopher thinker but no one becomes learned how can one become the learned kabir says ecstatic kabir says one who understands two and a half letters two and a half letters that comprise the word prem only that becomes wise only that becomes pandit two and a half letters of prem prem is the hindi word for love love is a four letter word and that really it has remained a four letter word it begins with something and it ends up with four letters and you know what i mean by four letter words every love relationship ends in a four letter word hindi word prem it is beautiful it is two and a half letters the first syllable is p and the last syllable is ma and in between there is a half vowel sound of r and a pre what does it refer p refers to one pole ma refers to another pole the two between whom the love has to evolve and because it is half incomplete that which happens between the lover and beloved always remains incomplete they are full of gratitude for one another the lover feels i have not done enough the beloved feels i have not done enough the lover feels that the beloved has given so much the beloved feels the lover has given so much and i have not responded him there is gratitude for one another and the process of this gratitude process of this overflowing never comes to an end that is why 
one who reads understands this two and a half letters of love really becomes a wise a learned an awakened one otherwise every love relationship you are looking for the expiry date and whenever you go and buy any product this has become your attitude way of life in the modern day when we are going to buy product first we look at its content and then we look at the expiry date so too has become love a commodity that is sold in the market by his expiry date nanak told the teacher he will learn that two and a half letter word love it is beautiful that is hindi equivalent for love contains only two and a half letters the two end letters represent the lover and the beloved and the half letter which is the sound of r that is constant consonant and the sound of a that is vowel re that represents the energy field that flows between the two and the half letter represents that constant flow of energy it is not complete it is continuing since the beginning of the civilization since the dawn of humanity and will continue no one knows the source the perennial source of love also no one understand where this flow of the river of love will sail to love is the mystery of the unknown never try to explore it you can be it you can live it the teacher brought back nanak home saying that he is invincible nanak's father arranged for him the hindu ritual which is known as a thread ceremony where a three phase thread is put around the neck of the person after the ceremony accordingly the child undergoes a religious ceremony and thus begins the formal worldly and the spiritual education ceremony began nanak wanted to know what will happen with this thread by this thread alone can one really become learned nanak wanted to know it is said with this ceremony one becomes twice born one birth is given by the mother and the other is given by the master nanak asked the priest does this really happen and had this happened to you that you are twice born the priest had no answer the priest got frightened he knows nothing will happen with the thread around your neck so he cannot answer he was honest enough again nanak inquired if the thread is broken priest said that you can replace with another one nanak says this is enough now that which breaks itself so easily and that which is available in the market for a small money cannot take you to that which is the ultimate how can this thread this is symbolic how can this thread take you to the beyond nanak's father mehta kalu thought nanak has gone astray all efforts went futile send him to take care of the animals nanak left the cow to graze and he sat in meditation under a tree cows entered the field of the neighbor again trouble started for his father father was convinced that nanak can do nothing the cows entered into the neighbor's field and eat out the entire crop and the man went to complain to nanak's father that you have sent an irresponsible boy to take care of the cows and they have entered my field and eaten destroyed the entire crop nanak came and said let us see when they came to see the the field was evergreen filled with crops 
such things happen. Really, indeed, all those who have the capacity to change the consciousness are considered useless by the world. What would have happened if Nanak was a successful was successful according to his father and lived a life that he wanted? He was a tax collector. He wanted Nanak to do something. The humanity would have been deprived of something of immense value. What would have happened if Nanak ran the business successfully? Nanak moved from the realm of doing to the realm of being. The realm of being is the realm of glory of the unknown. The realm of glory implies that he alone is the doer. We are simply an instrument. And what can I do with my limitations? The day this realization happens, ego dissolves drop by drop. And the moment you are aware of your incapability or limitations, the moment you realize that nothing can happen through your efforts, that very moment the door of the beyond opens. That very moment the door of salvation opens. You have understood the meaning of Amrit Bela, the hour of nectar. As this dawns on you, the words of the words of an aware an enlightened nana echoes, continues to echo in my ears. Once you have called me lovingly, ere long the melody continues to echo in my ears. Nana continues, he is everything unto himself, he is complete, total in him, nothing can be added or imposed on him. He is the cause of his own existence, Swayambhu. He is not dependent on any. Nanak says, singing, remembering and listening to the glories of that alone will relieve you of your pain and suffering. Nanak says, this remembrance has to be each finite moment. Just go to your place of it's not that you go to your place of worship once a week or once in a day and that will do, certainly that will do nothing. And even when you are in your place of worship, your mind wavers and it is not there. Many a time you look at the time and keep your cell phones on. How can you remember him? To be religious is not easy. It is a 24-hour assignment. There is no specific day, entire life, all day. It is 24-7 uh, service. Each moment belongs to Him. Live your life as if God is incorporated in everything that you can do. You are reading, you are listening to a CD. Listen as if it is the voice of the unknown. Nanak says only then you can be free from pain. Duk parihar sukh ghar le jai. Pain or suffering will vanish and you will carry bliss with you. Only then you will be home with full of joy. And how can you remember? Nanak says a devotee is like a pregnant woman. A change has taken place within her anatomy and with that there is a remembrance comes a remembrance she does everything but undercurrent the remembrance remains that I am carrying a new life into my womb it's not that she is acting on the stage the director has told to act naturally and spontaneously but nothing has happened inwardly in her she forgets that she does not need to bend in such a hurry and with a jerk. She has to be very delicate in every movement that she does. Walks very gently and gracefully. But the ordinary person walks galloping. So the one who is acting on the stage, instead of walking gracefully in a calculated steps, 
she begins to gallop because the change has not taken place within her. When the change has taken place within your anatomy and physiology, out of that change life will begin to move in a different direction. Only then you will reach home each time full of joy and happiness. You see a flower blossom, you are becoming one with the flower. You see the tree leaves dancing as the breeze touches it. You become a dancing tree. You start swinging. Then when you return or that event is over, you are ecstatic and you are ecstatic for no reason. And when you live your life as if he is surrounding you, you are always blissful and your blissfulness will fill your heart and home everything a new joy. You are unhappy because you are living your life without God. Why can't you see the image of God in everyone? Your wife, your son, your daughter, your husband, your neighbor. The same current flows in each and everything, sentient or insentient, but you cannot see that. As your perspective changes, a new meaning arises, life becomes benediction. I have heard a story about a Sufi called Hassan. One day someone asked, I can understand there is something like happiness. Is it so because God is? He is the Father and giving us happiness. But why is there sorrow? This I cannot understand. Hassan was sailing in his boat to reach to the other shore. Hassan let the questionnaire accompany him in his boat. He started rowing the boat with one rider. The boat started to move in circles. At this the questionnaire said, if you continue to row the boat like this with one rider, it will go on moving in circles alone. What is the matter with you? Is there something wrong that you are rowing the boat with one hand? Hassan responded, I thought you to be ignorant, but you seem to be wise. With one rider, the boat will go on circling for balance and movement. The pair of opposite is necessary. Life needs both opposing poles. So too, day and night, good and bad, life and death, two wings are necessary in togetherness. These opposing forces are two poles of the same energy. Electrical energy works on two poles as positive and negative. And without one, the light cannot happen. This is the law of dialectics. The moment you see, you will find everything has same origin, good and bad, are opposite forces of same energy. When this happens, you accept both. In that very acceptance, you are beyond the duality. The vested interest have asked you to choose good over bad, light over darkness. No. Then, when you accept the both, you go beyond the duality, then the resultant will remain is bliss beyond happiness and sorrow. Nanak says, Gurmukh Nadam, Gurmukh Vedam, Gurmukh Rehasana. Gurmukh means one who has turned his face towards the Master. And the words of the Master, Gurmukh Nadam, the words of the Master is the sound. The words of the Master is the scriptures. Master is the embodiment of the Divine. And one who understands this, this is the secret. Gura ek dei bujhai, sabna jiya ka ek data so mai jai. The only secret is that 
this I may never ever forget that he is the master of the entire creation. The master of the entire creation. He will continue 